Hello fellow humans and welcome back to the channel. I've been on holiday so there was a big delay between videos but here we have the Tower of Doom. As I'm still working through old footage, the audio wasn't recorded at the time so we'll have to stick with my boring old voiceovers for now. Today I'm building what I call a Tower of Doom. Other people may know it as a big shot, sky drop, mega drop, or just plain old drop tower. But you'll see what it is as we get going with the video. As we're building in challenge mode, we have access to the challenge piston, which can go quite some distance and a good speed as well. Here I start with the basics of the tower along with the initial section which you actually ride and will be attached to the piston. As you can see when you're working with pistons, or bearings for that matter, it's important to make sure you know which block you are building from, otherwise you end up with discrepancies where one piece will be attached to the piston and one piece will be attached to the rest of your creation. This can easily be checked by bringing out the weld tool and seeing which bits are attached to which other bits. Luckily scrap mechanic you don't have to worry about health and safety so I pick the ultra safe no straps office seat. Let's give this thing a look of paint to make it look a bit more fun fair like. We'll also extend the support structure around the seated area to make it look a little more robust. Again I'm just taking care here to make sure that I'm attaching it to the seated area and not to the tower itself. Let's throw in a few more seats and give it a go faster red paint job. Here I attempt to build a decorative roof to this thing. It may not end up being in the final design, but at least it shows the create process. Scrap mechanic can be quite limited in what parts you have available, so I always find it satisfying when I find an alternative use for a single part, such as this satellite dish inverted. It'd be nice for the ride to be started no matter where you got on, so I hook up a switch for each seat and hook these into a single logic gate that will control the up-down motion. Believe it or not, this is actually the first time I got around to testing it. After making sure we are in strict follow cam and first person, we give it a ride. I didn't have the game audio recorded, but I could hear a distinct bang as I hit the top. As you can see from the dust particles, there is a big collision up here and that needs to be sorted. So let's get back to build mode. I quickly figure out that it was the logic block and switches that were colliding with the top of the tower. 
However, I have a play around with the piston height and reduce it so that it doesn't come past the metal block on top. It's at this point that Sant joins and starts to criticise my work. He seems to be uh, missing the RGB that he's become accustomed to with the other rides. Sam wanted some RGB, so let's get cracking on the arduous process of adding in a thousand lights. Luckily, through the magic of editing, you don't have to watch what I went through. As usual, I realise I could have saved time just by making this a repeatable object that I can spawn in multiple times. So I create a stick of lights and paint them a rainbow colour. I didn't plan this very well, I have a tendency of doing things like this, so uh, I've got to cut this long strip in half at exactly the right colour point and paste these in the lower half of the tower. And there we have a full RGB drop tower. Just need to animate it a bit, which will take some logic work. This here is an attempt to recreate what I did with the ferris wheel in the dodgems but might not end up being the final solution as it will take a long time to link everything up. With Sans help we rebuilt the tower to more efficiently animate the lights. I also took the opportunity to rebuild the top of the tower as I did not like the look of the metal one blocks. Here I create a loop of logic blocks and because of the one tick delay they look like they are pulsing in sequence. I will add a timer on so that they also can be controlled. You will have to trust that I am getting the right logic block here as I dive into this nest of wires that trigger sections of the tower to light up in sequence. And there we have it, the Tower of Doom lit up in all its RGB goodness. Come back soon for the next video in the series, please like and subscribe.